Hi. There's recently been a lot of discussion about the relation between rate of fire and frame rate. My previous videos have been documentations on the effects brought on by lowering frame rate. I'm going to expand upon these videos in dedication to Mikhail Malikov who asked, can you look for the same issue in some other games? I attempted to reproduce these effects in two video games. These two video games are on different game engines and most likely different netcodes. The two games I'm going to be testing on are Half-Life 2 Deathmatch and Rainbow Six Siege. Half-Life 2 is ran on the Source engine, and Rainbow Six Siege is running off of the Anvil Next 2.0 engine. This is important because both of these engines are written in C++. This is true for the Unity engine as well, which is used by Escape from Tarkov. This means these games are comparable to some degree, and therefore easier to find correlations. I got my friend to join me in an online server to observe any potential variance in rate of fire during the frame rate adjustments. The servers we tested on were the SCUS, also known as the US South Central server, which is a dedicated server on Rainbow Six Siege. We had 22 milliseconds ping to the server, and for Half-Life 2 Deathmatch we joined a random server with 110 milliseconds of ping. After testing multiple frame caps my friend got bored, so I checked the values to determine if there was a difference between rate of fire based on point of view. I found that the difference between frame times for both POVs was a negligible amount of 1.704 frames. Knowing this I was able to test more frame caps without needing a secondhand observer. I found that in Rainbow Six Siege there's almost no difference in rate of fire up to the frame cap of 15 frames per second. Past that, rate of fire is starkly affected by the reduction of frame cap. There is an exponential increase in frames required to empty the magazine, in other words a decrease in effective rate of fire. Here we can see that from the observer the gun appears to be firing full auto, however if we look at the impacts on the wall, they are sparse and often evenly placed at the frame update. This phenomenon also occurred in my previous Escape from Tarkov video. At 2 FPS the gun appears to switch to single fire, and at 1 FPS the gun essentially becomes a muzzle loader and only fires once per second. Every game is not the same. So once we went over to Half-Life 2 Deathmatch we noticed pretty soon that there is a huge difference between the results of the previous games. Rate of fire appeared to stay at a solid 617 up until we entered the 2 FPS area, and where the gun behaved in an extremely odd manner. Take a look. <laughs> As we can see, the gun is attempting to catch up with what round it should be on, and in doing so it becomes a shotgun rather than an assault rifle. How does this all relate back to Escape from Tarkov though? After analyzing the data I collected, I found that Escape from Tarkov reacts to rate of fire depreciation at a greater level than Rainbow Six Siege, and a much higher level than Half-Life 2 Deathmatch. Of the games I tested, Half-Life 2 Deathmatch performed the best under low frame rate conditions. Rainbow Six Siege performed far below Half-Life 2 Deathmatch, and Tarkov performed the worst out of all these games. When comparing the percentage of original rate of fire to depreciated 2 FPS rate of fire, we can see that Half-Life 2 Deathmatch's FPS rate of fire was 89.29%. For Rainbow Six Siege, this is reduced to a staggering 12.59%, and a little below that is Escape from Tarkov's 11.72%. And if we take a look at these 15 FPS graphs I created, there's a greater increase in frames required to empty magazine in Escape from Tarkov compared to Rainbow Six Siege. Here we can see that Escape from Tarkov went from 211 frames to 425 frames compared to Rainbow Six Siege's 121 to 125. Escape from Tarkov had a 101.4% increase in frame time, whereas Rainbow Six Siege had a 3.31% increase. This is to be expected as Escape from Tarkov is in beta early access. As the game progresses there will most likely be updates to enhance the performance of the game and eventually to fix the issue at hand. This doesn't mean we shouldn't be bringing this up to the developers and to show the community this huge error. Considering the game's state, this bug is huge. Not many players can achieve 120 frames per second and those with lower end rigs will always suffer from it.
Oh my god. Oh, you were removed for the match. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>